Guys, ARPA stands for Automatic Radar Plotting Aids. And before I introduce you to the videos related to the working of the ARPA, I thought uh, today I'll introduce you to a case study uh, that involves the improper use of the radar and which resulted in a collision between two ships. Uh, this happened uh, way back uh, many years ago but it conveys the point of how uh, improper use of the radar equipment can uh, lead to a collision at sea. So before I go into it, uh, this involves two ships. One is the SS Admiral Nakimov, uh, which was originally actually named SS Berlin. And uh, on 31st of August 1986, uh, Admiral Nakimov or Nakimov rather, it collided uh, with a bulk carrier. The bulk carrier's name was uh, Pyotr uh, Vasev, and this happened uh, in a port near Russia, and uh, it led to the sinking of the ship, and in total about 423 people died uh, out of about, I think, 1,200 people. So this actually provides an example of, like I said, a collision uh, that was due to the improper use of the equipment and it led to a lot of uh, people dying so uh, so the figures are what i get from the internet so it was somewhere between 430 to 480 I'm not really sure what was the exact number it was somewhere during that so what happened in the case study was that uh, somewhere in the morning admiral Na nakimov uh, which was a passenger vessel of about 17,000 gross tonnage at 2200 hours, uh, that is uh, 10 p.m. at night, uh, that is Moscow time on 31st of August 1986. It sailed from Novorossi, Novorossiysk, uh, and it was en route to Sochi, and that was the next port. Uh, there were about uh, 890 odd passengers and 346 odd crew members on board and most of the passengers were Ukrainian with some others from Russia and the Baltics. Uh, just minutes into the voyage, uh, the ship's pilot noticed that the large bulk carrier that was uh, Pyotr Vasev uh, was on a collision course with the Admiral uh, Nakimov. So Pyotr Vasev was actually a Japanese built ship. It uh, was equipped with the ARPA, its gross tonnage was about 18,604. Uh, it was on a course of 036 degrees, a speed 11.5 knots, and it was uh, approaching the port at about 22.47 hours local time. Admiral Nakimov was on about 154 degrees through at about 10. Uh, Pyotr Vasev was actually a freighter and it was carrying a cargo of oats and barley from Canada. So the pilot radioed a warning to Pyotr Vasev and the freighter responded, don't worry, we will pass clear of each other. We will take care of everything. Despite the message, Captain Victor of uh, Pyotr Vasev did nothing to slow his ship or change the course. Convinced that the freighter would pass without incident, Captain Markov of Admiral Nakimov retired to his cabin, leaving his second mate in charge. From 11 p.m., the pilot radioed Pyotr Vasev several times, asking about her course and further actions. The pilot then changed the ship's course 10 at 11.10 p.m. The pilot cried on VHF to the freighter, immediately reverse your ship full astern. When it was clear that the freighter was headed directly for the ship, Pyotr Vasyev's engines were thrown in reverse. Admiral Nakimov turned hard to port, but it was too late. Before this happened, at 2300 hours, with the distance between the two vessels of about 4.2 miles, 
it was predicted on the basis of ARPA information that the vessels would pass each other with a CPA of about one nautical mile. The actual analysis of the situation at 2300 hours showed brow crossing distance at about 5.2 cables with actual CPA of only about 2.2 cables of the vessels from each other. At 2305 with the distance between the two vessels at about 2.3 miles, Bulker, the Bulker that was the Piotr massive orders half speed. At 2307, speed was reduced to slow ahead and half a minute later engines were stopped. At 2309 with the distance between the two vessels at about 0.9 nautical miles, the Piotr Vassev which was the Bulker orders slow astern and one minute later full astern. At 23 or 2312, Admiral Nakimov was struck by Piotr Vasev eight miles from the port of Novorossiysk and two miles from the shore. While many passengers had gone to bed by this time, some were on deck listening and dancing to music. They could only watch helplessly as the Bulkar rammed into the starboard side of the ship at a speed of about 5 knots. Admiral Nakimov actually continued forward with the freighter's bow in its side, ripping almost a 84 meter square hole in the hull between the engine and boiler rooms. Admiral Nakimov immediately took a list on her starboard side and her lights went out upon impact. After a few seconds, the emergency diesel generator powered on, but the lights went out again and two minutes later, plunging the sinking ship into darkness. People below decks found themselves lost in the dark and rapidly canting hallways. There was no time to launch the lifeboats. Hundreds of people dived into the water, clinging to life jackets and barrels and pieces of debris. Admiral Nakimov sank in only seven minutes, although rescue ships began arriving just 10 minutes after the ship went down. Piotr Vasev was not badly damaged and assisted in the rescue effort. Anyhow, the Soviet government formed a commission of inquiry to investigate the disaster. It determined that both Captain Markov and Captain Kachenko of Piotr Vasev had violated navigational safety rules. Despite repeated orders to let Admiral Nakimov pass, the captain of Piotr Vasev refused to slow his ship and only reported the accident 40 minutes after it occurred. Additionally, Captain Markov of Admiral Nakimov was absent from the bridge. Both the captains were found guilty of criminal negligence and sentenced to 15 years in prison. However, findings into the disaster found some significant points about the collision. It found that in complete contravention of the collision regulations, it was agreed over the VHF that the Bulker vessel Piotr Vasev would give way to the passenger vessel. Although the visibility was excellent, this collision could have been avoided by sight itself if earlier action had been taken place. Operator had no idea of the three minutes time required, which was the limitation of ARPA. So although the ARPA was being used, they relied completely on the ARPA, completely on the CPA. Early action was not taken. Peter Vassev was the one which was rather, not Peter Vassev, Piotr Vassev was one fitted with ARPA and it relied solely on the ARPA for collision avoidance. There was virtually no visual navigation that was taking place. When the target vessel was acquired by the ARPA on the Bulker, the target vessel had commenced increasing speed and had begun a gradual alteration of course to port. The ARPA was actually activated at 20 to 50 and on the basis of ARPA information, the CPA of the Nakimov was one nautical mile at 2300 hours when the two ships were only four nautical miles apart. In reality, actually, 
at 2300 hours the cpa was only 0.2 nautical miles so basically when i say the operator had no idea of the three minute time required that means the operator did not give enough time to the arpa to assess the situation and provide the operator with the correct information the initial cpa could have been large but that was not the correct assessment you have to allow the arpa to track the target over a period of time at least 3 minutes to be able to provide the accurate information regarding the cpa or the tcpa in the arpa since the arpa was activated only 20 minutes earlier than when the collision took place it was not enough time combination of small courses and speed alterations by the admiral nakimov introduced errors into the arpa calculations so if the operator had taken into account the limitations of the arpa if he had not only relied on the arpa for navigation and also uh, allowed visual navigation to take place had taken early action had understood the limitations of the arpa then the collision would not have taken place and so many lives would not have been lost so the reason i showed you this case study is for you to understand the limitations of equipments like arpa and radar we have been making videos on arpa and radar now and uh, you have to understand the limitations as well and in my future videos i'll also show you uh, the uh, operation of the arpa the limitations of the arpa i'll talk about uh, the target tracking and acquisition of the targets using the arpa of course but i thought before i go into that i will uh, introduce this case study to you guys all right thanks for watching guys and all the best with your studies